Hey guys, Shady Like a Tree here. Welcome in to Reminiscing with Shady, episode 72. This is Ridge Racer 5 on PlayStation 2. Now, for those of you uh, wondering a few episodes back, uh, actually it was quite a while back now, I guess, uh, I did an episode of Reminiscing with Shady that was Need for Speed Underground 2. And in that video I talked about how there were a lot of racing games that I played and I kind of looked for the perfect racing game um, during the PlayStation 2 era and how Need for Speed Underground 2 was kind of it for me. And the reason why it was it for me is because the Ridge Racer series to me has always been um, a little bit more difficult than I thought it should be. You'll notice in this uh, series and this episode specifically with Ridge Racer that your car kind of still handles like a sled. And if you remember back to I believe it was episode 15 or 16 uh, when I did the first Ridge Racer on PlayStation which was one of the very first games I have ever owned. Uh, I had my issues with that in that game too and in that video for that gameplay. So you're going to see some more struggles um, in this first map, but then the second map uh, I don't struggle as much because it is the map I'm much, much, much more familiar with. Ridge Racer 5 was uh, developed and published by Namco Games, who are very familiar for a lot of arcade style games. Uh, it was released on PlayStation 4 on March 4, 2000 in Japan, October 26, 2000 in North America, and later that year, November 24th of 2000 in Europe. And then uh, in 2001, it was released for arcade. Um, the cabinet was certainly a sit-down cabinet as well. Uh, I should mention that. Um, one of the things that drew me to this game is reminds you in uh, you know late 2000 I would have been a prepubescent 11 year old and on the cover of Ridge Racer 5 not only was there a car but there was a rather attractive cartoon anime woman um, which drew me to this game because well any time that there was that in a game my interest was piqued and sure enough um, I, I did purchase the game. Um, I had it for a short while um, before uh, realizing that this wasn't as good um, of an experience as I wanted. And then when uh, Need for Speed Underground 2 came out, um, that was kind of my go-to racing game, as I stated in that episode. Um, but one of the things that uh, kind of has always drawn me to this game and um, kind of interests me about this game and things that I, I thought I might share with you is that I, I do like, you know, the, the, the kind of different feel. For me, this was kind of the first racing game where, um, you know, all the maps were were realistic. At the same time, they were all different. You know, if you remember the original Ridge Racer, it was basically the same map. You just went a bunch of different ways and a bunch of different turns. So it was really hard to kind of memorize a, a particular turn style or system. And in this game, there are sure, there are some... Uh, variations to each map but there are also different maps another one of the things about this game that I did like back in the day was when I had a, a an original TV um, was the shadows and the shading and kind of the lighting effects now here with my HD TV it was kind of hard because the shadows and are kind of like dark without any light and they're hard to see hard to navigate and in this first race it uh, it cost me on the first lap and uh, it, it'll cost me again I think uh, here towards the end but uh, one of the things I really like about this game was that, you know, it just, it, it handled predictably, albeit not well, but it was predictable. Um, as you can see right there, I kind of know that I'm going to spin out and I try to avoid it as best I can. But um, as far as the things that this game doesn't do well, to me, it doesn't drift as naturally as a lot of the other games, especially Need for Speed Underground 2, which is kind of my benchmark starting point when I talk about any racing game, because that game was a, it was nirvana to me, it was perfection to me. But uh, other than that, I just I just want to say that this game was was another one of those games that I played for a little bit um, with friends, and um, we would kind of go up against each other if we could. Um, I remember that uh, we used to we used to time trial against each other. We would we would set up like four PCs and or four PCs, four TVs in a room, and we would all start at the exact. We'd all pause at the beginning, and then we would all start at the same time. And then whoever, like, we would race each other on different systems because back then we didn't know enough about LAN or anything like that to, to make it happen. And um, we didn't like playing on the on the split screen or anything like that. So we, uh, we worked very, very hard to um, kind of play each other kind of simultaneously in the same room with on different TVs, kind of with our backs to each other and 
talking trash the whole time and uh, i remember our one friend jonathan he was always really bad kind of like uh kind of like uh, a lot of other people that play racing games not gonna mention anyone out specifically but he was always really bad and he was always coming in last place and um you know not doing as well as as, as the rest of us were and uh it was just always fun because he would always make up some some bs excuse and and it was always hilarious you know getting to hear him um you know blame oh well i, I got sun in my eyes or, or there was a, there was a deer in my way or whatever excuse he would have come up with at the time but uh yeah it was just uh it was a good fun time to play this game and uh you know i as, as i said you know for me you know this game is good but not great um it's it's shy of gaming nirvana because for me the best recent game of all time is need for speed underground 2 and it's it's perfect to me and i have no argument is gonna stray me from that point but this game is still pretty much a classic and um i know it's a lot of people's not favorite one in the franchise but um at the same time you know it kind of um it, it, it kind of you know it, it just Sets, sets itself apart from other games, I will say that. Um, it did have a bunch of different songs in it, most of them, uh, you know, of Japan um, kind of origin, I guess, um, is the way to put it. And then it had some boss cars in it, um, and then it also, you know, had a bunch of different regular cars that you could unlock, and you, you, had kind of, you had to kind of play a career mode before you could unlock a lot of these other cars, and then you could go into time trials and unlock races and unlock cars and things along those lines and you could actually beat them but um you know it was it was it was kind of a fun thing and and you know we would like i said we would just kind of play together in a room and we would race each other and try to beat each other's high score and things along those light and i come very 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 close excuse me to uh tying the to, to beating the lap record i'm off i think by a few few hundreds of a second um or a few tenths of a second i mean um but at the end of the day, this game is, is quite a bit of fun, and um, you guys should check it out if you are interested in it, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I've, I've played the last that I'm probably going to ever play of this game, because again, Need for Speed Underground 2, but I'm going to link all the appropriate videos that I mentioned, uh, previous reminiscing with Shadies, in the description, so I hope you guys enjoy those and check those out. I'm going to get out of here and let you kind of just enjoy the last lap. Take care, guys, and uh, I'll see you next time.